Bu yaka shaw come back to another episode if you if of if you can't handle the heat it's your boy G Swizz joined by my brother here now Michael will hop on later but before we get to that I want to say hello to our first ever Olympic champion He's played in France, Russia, Germany, and Poland. A setter who gives us short guys some hope on the volleyball court. The great Ben Toniuti. Ben, my man, thank you so much for coming on, brother. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hi. Nice oh. to meet you. Happy nice to, to meet you, there. too. The eighth, again, once again, like I said, as, a, as, a undersi- or as an undersized player, we just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart um, <laughs> to showing, us, to, to showing the, those big guys uh, what it's all about. With that being said, uh, I know you played a game yesterday. Um, on your normal off day, like what is your like typical routine or something that you like to enjoy doing? Uh, I mean, now we have a little bit crazy schedule from the beginning of the season because we are playing like uh, every every three days and it will be like this until the end of the season. So today uh, we have the chance to have a free day and it's really not often. So so this morning I, I rest a little bit and uh, and this afternoon I will pick up my kids to from the school. And uh, enjoy a little bit of uh, free time with them. And, uh, and tomorrow, let's go back to, to practice. We have uh, twice tomorrow, like in the morning and the afternoon. And uh, Friday morning, we'll, we'll travel to Warsaw because we, we are playing in Warsaw this weekend. Oh, very, and, and do your kids attend a school with multiple languages or are they learning only Polish? Uh, they are going to normal Polish school. So my okay. uh, older daughter, uh, she is like a little bit more than seven. She's speaking like a perfect, uh, perfect <laughs> Polish because uh, we are we are right in Poland. She was like two months. So so she's just there like from all the life. We are coming back in France like during the summer. And uh, the youngest one, uh, she's a little bit more than three years. And uh, and she started to, to speak also. She's in kindergarten, only like Polish. So it's nice for them. It's nice uh, adventure and uh, to see different uh, kids. We just want to for them to have a normal life and uh, and uh, enjoy the time with the kids. And uh, so it's also nice to have uh, to speak already two languages uh, at seven. And also they start to be to speak a little bit English, but this is like uh, only one and two hours during the week. So what? So. I like to ask players who are who are later in their careers about when they have a family and everything. So, what is what was your off days or whenever you had free time? What were you doing when you were when you didn't have a family versus <laughs> now you have a family? What is your like off day and what do you like to do now? Um, I mean, for sure. For example, before I was playing some video games and uh, yeah. and now it's uh, just not possible. I I just have no time. So, but like. The first part of the season, I'm a little bit alone because my family is coming really often, like end of September. So I have a few weeks like uh, alone and also they are coming back to France like in April. So for the period of playoff, really often I'm alone. So I have time, to, I have a little bit more time, uh, free time. And also one <laughs> funny story is about like American guy. It's like we have a good friend. We are good friends with David Smith. <laughs> and it's really funny because uh, when we see each other, also I was playing with him in Zaxa, and uh, when my daughter is speaking with the mm, son of uh, of David, they are speaking together in Polish. So it's really <laughs> it's really funny, like uh, French uh, family speaking with uh, American family, and they are speaking together in Polish. So it's it's really funny. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. awesome. That yeah, that's the amazing thing about all the kids from players who live throughout the world. I know I spoke with Mikey Christensen with his son who is in a Russian school learning English too and um j- just for just for fun what video games did you play when you were <laughs> when you were playing video games <laughs> I mean uh, I was playing a lot of FIFA now a little bit oh, less okay. I have less time um uncharted uncharted so no I was playing a few video games and for sure now it's more difficult now i'm playing yeah. more mario kart on the nintendo switch so yeah i like video game i'm not crazy uh fans but when i have free time i love to play also with the guys in the national team we are playing together so it's nice nice that's awesome, awesome. um well i want to kind of get in your career here a little bit um obviously you're you're 32 years old so you've been setting for a long long time 
um, what are you working on currently on a day to day basis? Like, how do you keep motivation at your at such a high level, right? What is some things that I imagine they're probably smaller things that you work on on a daily basis to keep focused on? I mean, I just always uh, have some dream in my career when I start my career and I want to achieve something. So, for example, when I start. Uh, uh, when I started to be young, I was dreaming to to be a professional player. When uh, when you are you arrive to to be professional, then you have to find another uh, goal and motivation. So all my career is, is about this. And uh, when you start to win some trophy, you just want to continue to win. So this is also the motivation every day to come to practice, to to just improve, uh, to to have the best career you can have and uh and just yeah i mean the feeling of uh, going up on the podium is always something special and uh it's a lot of work and a lot of uh, sacrifice and uh and i just enjoy this moment so i'm trying to do all my best to to have the best career possible to to win the most trophy possible and uh, and yeah about practicing for sure for me i love to touch the ball so I'm setting quite a lot every day, even uh, if if we if the coach say, OK, you just have to wait lifting. I just come sometimes after to just set a little bit because I just love to to keep the contact with the ball and uh, and set like uh, really a lot. Yeah. And that's something in with setting specifically. Is there a certain thing? Because like two summers ago during COVID, I remember I was in Hawaii Micah Christensen, he was there too. One another one of the, you know, national team setters, one of the top in the world, like yourself. Um, and he was working a lot on long distance setting, like being stationary and uh, and maybe not jump setting in certain situations and figuring out like the balance of that, and then also like keeping rhythm on the set on medium situations um, behind as well into position too. And those were like two things for him specifically that he really like found that he he wanted numbers to be better at and like delivery to be better at. Is there something right now in your career that you found or the coaches found like for this season that is uh, something specific that you're working on, or is it just kind of for you generally everything that you just continue to get touches on um, at this point in your career? I I think every setter has some characteristic, and they have better is some points and uh, they have weaker points so also it's important to work on these weaker points to improve mm -hmm. um, maybe Micah was uh, was saying a lot about long distance because uh, he he doesn't feel so comfortable on this ball so he just work a little bit more on this ball mm -hmm. I think it's important and it's good also in the position of the setter like you say that uh, you can set even without jumping only to to keep the the yeah the the position the work with the hands uh to push uh, to push with the legs so to have good balance even if you're not jumping so there is a lot of things that you can uh, you can work on uh even if you are tired uh even if you have some pain so it's always good to to work and i think it's uh it's important to to just know where we have some weak points and work on the on this point i think it's really important absolutely and i think yeah like and sometimes that goes like season to season like sometimes you lose like touch on a certain play because you play certain balls more than the other because maybe you have you know stronger pipe attack mm -hmm. in some seasons and stronger opposite some seasons and so it's always like i feel like you see that happen a lot to setters like depending on what the last season they had you see like certain balls just stronger. And so it's like throughout the season or throughout your careers, it's important to maintain, like, like you said, just, uh, maintain like every single set, like getting in the gym every day after weight training and ball, uh, just touching the ball. I think that's the biggest thing in, I think that's like in France, um, I, with the development of youth and juniors volleyball, you guys, I think do a great job because don't, like youth volleyball players in France only play like three versus three or four versus four at a young age. Is that, is that true? And so they're touching the ball a lot more. What do you think yeah. the benefits of that is versus some countries who go directly into six on six or what you've seen from it? Um, 
it's true that in France we have not this culture of uh, two against two. I mean, the beach volley is uh, okay. They they start to develop the beach volley two against two because it's it will be Olympic game in Paris 2024, but and it's Olympic uh, sports. Mm -hmm. But for sure, like young players and a lot of players in France prefer to play three against three. Uh, like uh, green, uh, so even on, on the on the beach. So yeah, it's really popular to to play uh, this kind of uh, of uh, volleyball, and uh, yeah, they enjoy more. They enjoy more about uh, the rules, uh, about technique, and uh, and for sure, a lot of good player play uh, three against three before. Like uh, Genia Grebenikov is really good uh, in three against three. Uh, Trevor Klevno. Uh, Kevin Tilly and you you saw that these players are really technical and they uh, they just uh, uh, start even before the indoor volleyball they start on the beach like to play three against three so for them it's uh, it's normal. That's amazing. What what's something for you that you now um, you know being later on in your career that you wish you had known or had done earlier on from a young age in your early professional career, if there's something? I mean, uh, something something difficult to to work on and uh, and to know when you're young, it's uh, when you're a setter, it's uh, a lot about the, the moments, moments in the game, moment, moments uh, in the set uh, with the players, uh, and this, I think, it's it's really important for the setter, and uh, and you learn season after season also uh, about the moments in one important game, moments in the beginning of the season, and uh, and it's really important. And I think this is a uh, it's something uh, it's difficult to practice. It's difficult to practice, and you need uh, experience and. Uh, and this is the biggest uh, thing I think I improved during my career, and I still have to improve because it's uh, it's something like uh, where you can see the difference between uh, between good setter and uh, top setters uh, because it's not always uh, uh, good to set good uh, until twenty, but then there is uh, the good ball in the good moment on the good guy uh in the key moment so this is something like uh, for sure uh i would love to to have this when i was younger but uh but for sure i, I get experience and uh and now i feel more comfortable about this i i have a question when a lot of elite setters in the world they keep things very simple when they set like it's very very simple why is it that those players are elite and they win a lot more rather than the flashy setters a lot of time, the setters that go here, here, here. And, and obviously someone at your level can do that. But a lot of the time, let's make the good set here and let's, let's be able to kind of side out. Why is it that those types of setters are always more elite than the other types of setters? Uh, this is a, a, a good question, but it's always, the, it's always a balance between the creative setter and the setter who will... Uh, who will find a way to win in the end, and uh, and you have to find a balance between both. I mean, you cannot be too much predictable, and also you cannot be too much creative because in the end uh, you will lose in the quality of the set, and uh, you will the focus. You will try to yeah to imagine something that it's not uh, it's not in a good moment to do it. So so. I would always uh, recommend to to give the best ball in the right guy in the good moment, and I think this is the more important. Just to to think about this, to think about the quality of the set, to think about uh, uh, what will be the best option to help my my team to win, and this is the more important things. I think. Did you ever struggle with feeling that out? Or did you always kind of have the feeling of, of, okay, in this situation, I set him in this situation. Okay, maybe I try something tricky. Or, yeah, and I think those that's like the moment you were just referring to, like understanding the moment. How, like, what are some key, like, parts of your career that helped you kind of 
realize this, I would say, I guess. Um, yeah, I mean, for sure. I, I, made, I, made, I made some mistake when I was younger. Uh, I remember my first season, we had some match ball in, uh, in semi-final of the French Championship. And, uh, and I gave the ball, the match ball to, to the opposite. Uh, and I think the best idea was to give to the position four. So um, after I was thinking, I was not sleeping for the night about this ball. And, uh, and will happen, will, will still happen. And for sure, I made, the, I made the mistake and I would do again, maybe. Uh, but you, un- you have to understand why. I think when you are setting also, it's important to, if you take the decision, to take this decision and to be like uh, full uh, sure that it's the right decision. Because if you start to think, maybe I should do this, maybe if I do this, will after you will even give a bad set to the guy. And I think in the, in the end, the more important is the quality of the set. I will tell you one story. For example, I, I, we were playing against uh, Brazil in the final of VNL 2000. 17, I think uh, it, yeah, it was uh, World League. It was still World League in Curitiba in Brazil against Brazil. And uh, it was 14 12, 14 12 for us in the tiebreak. So I go out for the block and uh, I, was, uh, I was on the bench. I, I just checked the line of the block in Brazil because I was thinking they will do side out. So we have to do the last side out to, to win the. the, the uh world league so what will be the best option so i just check our line of spike i even don't focus about uh what we did in breakpoint so we lose the point i come inside and i was like i was convinced that the best ball will be perfect reception i will call first temple close to me and play in four on trevor Clevno, who didn't spike a lot of ball during the final but he was front of bruno and he was the worst blocker in this moment like in the on the line of brazil so I, I, I was thinking, I was like focused about this idea, even when we were doing in breakpoint, like one point before. And uh, I do this and he spike over uh, Bruno and we win the league. So we win the world, world league. So I think it's always good to, to have something clear in your mind. And even if they know that you will do this, I think it's important for you to have the quality and have the good set in the good moments. No, and that's great. And we'll, we'll, we'll welcome on Micah here. It'll, uh, so it's not just like awkward <laughs> popping in on the on the video. But Micah, join us here. He's on the road actually right now. And he's in Poland okay. as well. Ben, so, thank on. you for coming, man. Uh, hi, man. Hi. How are you doing? Good, good. Perfect. Sorry I'm late. Sorry I'm late. We had video. Uh, no problem. <laughs> last minute, you know, in hotel when they think that you have your whole life is free. So they <laughs> put what they want when they want. So but that was, a, I have a question just based on this story. Um, how do you manage like having an idea before the, the service? And then also like how much weight, I guess, I don't know how you like describe it, but how much do you listen to that plan before service? Or do you have like an idea before the serve? And then what, when the play is happening, things will change. I have my idea before the service. I have my idea during, before the service, and then I take the de- decision when I saw the reception, how fast is it, how middle blocker is coming, like if he's coming fast in first tempo. If I see that the guy in pipe is, uh, for example, is uh, ready to spike the, spi- the, the pipe because uh, maybe he's receiving short service. So I have my idea, but then the decision I take in the last moment when I, I saw all the elements who can give me the decision. I mean, so you have like, for example, like you have an idea of you're playing seven back. Exactly. And you will play between these two options. I think yes. But for example, if in my peripheric vision, I saw that the opposite is helping a lot on the seven, I can take in the last moment decision to play over. I mean, right. so yeah. I mean, I have always my uh, my base during before the service, and I, then I take the decision in the la, in the last moment. But for sure, I have my base. Uh, I would tell you also one story. One two years ago, we were like with uh, uh, in Zaxa with uh, Nikola Gerbich as a coach, 
we we have our opposite Kashmarek who was injury and uh, we we play like our first game with second opposite uh, Arpad Baroti he was from Hungary and it was and okay uh, I play only one game with him so I I cannot say that I don't trust him but I was like not convinced to give him the ball in the this moment so we were playing in some team in Poland and we were like 24 23 and um uh, we have side out and uh, I uh, we have timeout and I say Nicola what do you think and he tell me call cl uh, first tempo close to you position for uh, opponent we jump on the first tempo and you play on the arpad second line and it will be one against you and in my idea I would never do this perfect reception I play first tempo I say set to arpad one against zero he finished the ball I say okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes you know, also you have to <laughs> to yeah, listen about the idea of the coach, especially when it's coach like this, like uh, who have good experience. <laughs> who 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 would you say your most favorite or the funnest player to set is that you've ever set? I mean, Ervin is for sure is particular like guy because uh, the funniest things that it even. If you are setting some shitball, he can find a solution, and it's always comfortable for the for the setter. I, for sure, you see the spike in European Championship 2015 when he do this uh, spike behind against Slovenia, and I mean this set was shit. It was shit ball, but it was the match ball of the European Championship, and nobody see and speak about this set because the ball was really bad. But it was the last ball of the European Championship to win the championship. So, you know, it's uh, it's always uh, funny and nice to play with him because he always can find a solution. So we, we had Namir on um, and we asked him, I asked him, I, I was like, was there ever a time where you were mad that he would do something so crazy in this situation? Was ever Because I know you guys have been playing for a long time together. Um, but has there ever been a point where you, where, where you were just like, what? the hell was that like what are you doing <laughs> and you got like really angry with them i i mean sometimes sometimes i was angry and uh but also it's part of the player you have to accept yeah. this that he's like this is the guy who uh who creates something in the volleyball and this is not a comment i mean is the almost the first guy who start to fake the spike and set from three meters is like he creates something in volleyball so you have to accept that sometimes he's not taking the good decision in the right moment like you also so so you have to accept this but uh yeah for sure i was mad sometimes against him and uh, and it will happen still <laughs> That's awesome. you you were speaking about your peripheral i just want to ask quickly what is for you, what's your idea and like what you're trying to see? Because you're talking about seeing the opposite. I know some setters are like, oh, I'm mostly focused on the middle. Like for you, what are you trying to uh, what are you trying to pick up in your peripheral when you have the opportunity to? Can you repeat the question, please? Yeah, the you were you were mentioning before uh, you were speaking on um, your peripheral vision and seeing okay. you're speaking about yep. seeing the opposite. Um, and I was just asking you, because you ask some setters and they're focused a lot on just the middle. Some are focused on other things. And I was uh, asking, like, when the when you have the moment to be able to use your peripheral and see, like, what are you trying to pick up? Are you looking across the entire blocking line um, or is it kind of based on the team? I mean, also, uh, it's always difficult to to have peripheric vision of all the blocks so you just i when when i have this peripheric vision it's not like i saw that the player will jump or something i just see something that the middle is following for example uh then there is a lot of things that i'm preparing with the staff before the game also with the with game plan with uh some characteristic of the player you know that some players are helping a lot on the first tempo, on the seven, on the first tempo close to you. Uh, only when your opposite is second line, they are not helping when the opposite is first line. So you have a lot of uh, uh, things before the game also who can help you to take the decision. So that's also something uh, really important for me to 
to prepare in the right right way the game before and uh and just to see how they are playing block defense because for sure a lot of players have big characteristics in block no, absolutely i is there any the, wait go ahead Joe. go ahead no you go Micah. you go i is there um anything you did to train your peripheral vision uh or is it just something you you have gotten i mean at? yeah yeah we have in the center national volleyball, we have some exercise. For example, uh, also in the club, like uh, the coach was, like for example, making one step of uh, on the seven, and you have to saw it and uh, play back. For example, or uh, staying in the mid middle, so in this way you play more seven. So you can have a lot of exercise to to work on this. Uh, you can also work with uh, some number. For example, you have to to read the number of color. Or a lot, a lot of exercise, I think, to to work on this uh, peripheric vision for the for the for the setter. But also, for me, I I know that some setter are looking to the other side. For me, it's really difficult because uh, I try and uh, I really often lose the uh, lose the points the where the ball will. Yeah, exactly. I will lose I will lose the timing with the ball and a lot of things and I prefer to use a little bit this perfect vision and uh, and after more be more stable on my feet and uh, and to to have better possibility to to set a good ball. So for anyone who watches you they can see that you're clearly a leader, right? Nat natural. So there are some natural born leaders and that's what I kind of see when watching you play and as a setter you're naturally going to be a leader as well. Um have there been any strange requests from players, either sets or how to treat them? For example, um, I had some people come up to me and say, hey, you can't yell at me. Or some guy that's like, hey, if I mess up, I want you to scream in my face and, and let me know that I messed up. Is there anything like very – because you've, you've had a very long, lucrative career. Is there something that you had a teammate that was like, hey, I, I need you to do this, that was just like, what is he asking me to do right now? I mean, yeah, for sure, for sure, I have some. Uh, what I love also, it's uh, it's fast during the season or preparation. It's to analyze, try to analyze the players, and to me, find a way how they are performing in the best way. So, which ball are good for them? Uh, if they are a good guy, a good player in the crucial moments so this i love to also find the like a uh, moment and everything and i'm doing this during the preparation during friendly game uh and then for sure i have some strange requests i was i like my first year in national team 2010 i just arrived in the national team and um, samika was there guillaume samika uh outside eater and i remember like i love to play seven over and uh, after two practice, he come to me, Ben. I hate play seven. I hate to spike over the seven <laughs> because I cannot see the ball. And for me, it's impossible. I cannot. So, for example, I was like, okay, he's thirty-two years old. Like I'm, like I'm nineteen years old. I just don't play seven over with him because I know that he doesn't like. So, so yeah. I mean, for sure, there is some requests of the set of the players, and in the in the end. What is important is that every player feel good and performing in the best, uh, like, uh, like uh, in the best way. So you have to have open mind when you are setter to, to, to listen them and just to, to play in the best way to, to, to make a win the team. Uh, so I have two questions, Gage. I gotta ask. They're yeah. specific to you, Ben. Um, so one is you mentioned you play, you like to play seven over. Uh, and for me, you're the best in the world at this. Is there, I know you're still playing, so you can't give all the secrets, but <laughs> is, there, is there something that you can give a tip to players out there to like, cause it's, um, it's probably one of your best things. It's, it's really difficult to read. And, it, um, I'm sure you have some ideas about it. And then two, I'll let you answer that. And I will, I'll go next. Um, yeah, I, I love this ball. I love this ball because I'm I'm not so tall, so I think for for the block for the positions two is really difficult 
to read if it's the seven of the ball over because the ball is not going like this it's going a little bit like this and then the middle blocker just cannot reach the ball i'm a little bit holding the ball that's why i think the tempo is really difficult to to read for the for the for the position position two in block so yeah i love i i love this ball from i was young and yeah so it's the trajectory it looks- i think it's yeah, I think it's much more easy for the setter who are uh, small. I mean, right, right. Because if you are big and the ball, it's gonna go either up. Exactly, or exactly, exactly. And here they both need to go up. Exactly. Okay, and two, when you set middle, a lot of the times you are rotating in the air. Is this okay. or like in general you are rotating in the air? And I know like Brizard also setting back sometimes can like spin in the air. You do the same sometimes. Is this on purpose or it's just natural? I think it's natural because uh, it's not like uh, we have a coach in France to learn us like this. I think it's only natural, I think. yeah. Okay. And is there any benefit, you think? or? I mean, for sure, we have uh, this system, I mean, in France. Uh, maybe not for every middle blocker in, uh, in Poland. But we are, when we are coming out from the net, uh, really often, even if we call first tempo one, we are going to search the net. So mm-hmm. so that's why we are rotating to the net, because we are always trying to to play the ball from out of the net to the net. And like this, the middle can have more direction. Now I'm playing with some middle in Poland. They prefer to keep the distance with the net. And play on the like higher points. You can see you last year you played with Yenek. He's playing like some first tempo from three meters sometimes, like a pipe. So <laughs> and he's reaching high. So it's different kind of uh, middle. I was playing with Kochanowski and uh, he's Polish, but he need the ball to the net. So it's de- depends on the of the player, I think. Okay. No, yeah, that I I'm glad you asked that, Micah, because those are definitely things that like are very noticeable and I'm glad we got your in input on that. The I I wanted to ask like from a leadership perspective because that's with somebody with you like you, the amount of experience and everything that you have, um, you experience a lot. Like when you're dealing with specifically an attacker and a key attacker that uh that is on your team who's struggling in a match. Like what are some? Obviously, it depends on different players. Like some certain players need different things. But what are some things that you have found over the years um, as a setter that's like the most important thing to get a player back into the match? Because I think that's something like you're talking about the moments that young setters, I think, especially like even all the way in the youth volleyball in the U.S., they, I get questions about that a lot. It's like well, knowing when to play, how to bring certain players into the match. So just insight mm-hmm. from you on that. Um, It's really... It's really a nice question because it's also something that I improved during my career. Because sometimes you are really focused about performance of one player. And I would say, for example, one example. You said you said to position four, three high ball in the row. He take one block, one time they defend him, one time uh, he spike out. And you have this feedback, for example, as a setter, Fuck, he's not, he's not in the good moment. I will not give him the ball. And now I am taking in consideration different things. I'm going maybe in the next timeout, I'm going to the scouts or to the assistant coach. How is this guy? Okay, from perfect reception, he's like seven on eight. But you have this feeling of this last three high ball. But he's scoring on the perfect pass. So so also just putting, putting bad... The, putting back the game uh the guy in the game where he's doing good so maybe just leave him don't give him some high ball now just wait a little bit he will score some uh, good good uh he will score some uh, spike in the good pass and just he will come back uh, with the rhythm you just go to him say okay now i will not give you some high ball you will score on the, just i think it's really important to to don't have really close highs and uh, and uh, check where the guy is performing. That's a really good point. 
Uh, and I really that like is that. a really good point. I really like yeah. that too. Because that's something even, especially in, as middles, because like that's something we, like I've even on our team that we've been discussing. Like certain, there's only like there's like certain balls that we're performing really high at, and certain balls that we're not performing well at. But opponents too leave it open, and so it's like it's like it's tempting always. And we've like done way our numbers have gone way up now that we've avoided certain situations. But at the same time, it's like we know it's available, so it's like we want to work on it, but we're just not strong mm. at attacking certain balls. And so I think, like you said, it's you learn that like the experienced setters know <laughs> of what is situations to play certain balls with. So uh, I really like that uh, uh, that point. Two questions, Ben. Ben, do you ever go by Tony? Show short for Tony Ut, of course. Does anyone ever call you Tony? My name is Totti. Totti? Why Totti? Yeah, Totti. T O T T E I. How'd you get that? Mm, when I was young, they just called me Totti. I don't know. Okay. Like... Okay. Um, I was just curious. And with, and my second question is: When you were younger, did you ever experience any people like looking over you because you were small, or being like, "Oh, you know, he's small," or you <clears throat> know, do you have a chip on your shoulder because of that? Yeah. I mean, this was this was also why maybe I have so much motivation to 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 play high level because uh, I remember that uh, when I was like 14, 15 in France, you have some uh, uh, detection of the best player in the country, and I was I was small, and one of the coach just tell me, "You're a good player, but you will never play high level because you are too small." And this stay in your mind. I mean, stay in your mind. And just now, when you you achieve something, you win some trophy. You're always thinking about this kind of uh, of coaches who give you some extra motivation. So yeah, I, I mean, I mean, yeah, it was important for me, and uh, it was difficult to hear this when you're young. But in the end, for sure, give me some extra extra power. But yeah, and in France specifically, I feel like that's a country that in volleyball culture is like allows more like the smaller players to kind of like when you think of france volleyball especially in the u.s when you talk to people it's like that's an example to a lot of like small players i know like uh, youth volleyball coaches and university coaches when they are working with small players a lot of them point to your guys as national team and a lot of players like yourself and so that's interesting that even in france that happens because if you yeah, sure. guys national sure. team <laughs> yeah because one moment in france they also, one moment in France, they they really try to to also find tall setter to have this uh, yeah this way to to play only with tall setter. So one moment was like this. Now it changed a little bit. Uh, maybe because of me, I don't know, but <laughs> but for sure they changed a little bit uh, the mind. Um, and um, I think it's uh, it's possible. I yeah, uh, maybe it's more difficult, but it's possible. I have another question. Um, and yeah, you're right. I think like we had the same, and I think it is because of you guys that now it's it's not so much about height. We had the same. I think it was like around Loy Ball time that everybody mm -hmm. wanted a big setter. And then yeah, yeah. Yeah, after yeah. that, when you, Maruf, Bruno, all these guys came, they were all undersized and just yeah. like really talented. And you guys definitely opened the doors. Um, yeah, I go ahead. Yeah, it was like this. Like before, it was like Lloyd Ball, uh, Gerbich, it was uh, Blanger from Netherlands. It was a lot of very tall setter. So maybe it was uh, like they were thinking that the only way to win it was to have good set, uh, like tall setter. And for sure, now with uh, with Dicheco, with Bruno, with Maruf, uh, now Sanchez is really small, but like a, lo a lot of good, like small setter now. So what it, what it no i was just gonna say what is one thing from like all those guys that you is there something from any of those guys that you've picked up and added to your game because i know like a lot of setters that watch it like any of those guys you just listed was throughout your career has there been anything that you can point to that's like i picked that up from watching those guys film of those guys play um just when I was young, I was watching a lot of volleyball and was watching a lot Ricardo uh, from Brazil. I was watching him a lot. I was watching a lot of Nikola Gerevich. Uh, more about uh, 
how he his behavior on the course also light ball like uh he was really charismatic like a player setter and uh now for sure i admire like for me it's uh for me it's crazy how uh, the back set for example of maruf of uh, the checo uh how Micah Christensen is playing the pipe is like crazy it's some uh, something like you have to to say whoa and uh and for sure you are taking care of this and uh, watch on this because it's something like uh they are the best on this so so it's always important to 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 watch volleyball to I would not say copy but see what the best are doing and just to to say okay this is working this is because after you cannot copy because everybody have different type of uh, of setting and it's it's impossible to copy but just to see how how it's work and uh, how they are performing you spoke Absolutely. about like watching character um and body behavior and things like this and i think something at least for us when we moved to europe we learned how important that was because in America, it's about technique and all these things. Um, what are some things in a setter that um, you think are important characteristics and how did you develop and, and um, grow these things and, and become the leader and um, person that you are on the court? Um, for me, it's always important to, to show to the guy, to my teammates that uh, I always trust them. I trust them. It doesn't matter the moment. doesn't matter uh, what they did before. They they should feel confident. They should uh, see that uh, in doesn't matter the moment, even how they were playing. Uh, I trust them, and uh, and they have to to see this on my body language. To always uh, speak with them when they have some problem, just uh, just to to help the team, and because. We are the guy who are touching the ball every every point, so we can decide. We can decide. So, if uh, if the setter lose the focus about this, then it's a, it's a mess. It's a mess. So I think this is uh, something also I uh, I improve on this uh, season after season. Uh, and yeah, I think it's really really important. Uh, really important. Well, oh, that's awesome. The what is. One last question, and then I know my brother wants to do a small game, and then we're gonna let you go. Um, the uh, in terms of the system, like the offensive system for French uh, national team, what are what are a couple like of the elements and one thing that you guys are trained in terms of uh, that you guys talk about? Because when, for example, when we watch like French national team volleyball over the past ten years, they're the ones who really adapted. You know, the throwing and the uh, the replay and the recycling the block you guys do that at such a high level like is there in general like what is uh key elements of your guys' system that you guys talk about a lot um with your french national team um with the setter hitter connections it's more about the system how we to perform we don't have the guy like we never had a guy in national team to to are so strong on high ball. So the only way for us to to have the possibility because the serving is stronger and stronger. So the reception is like a minus now a lot of uh, minus reception. So the only way to have the possibility to to play uh, smart is to rebuild the ball, to to push, to to work uh, block and defense. Then to so yeah, I think it's a lot about technique of the players, and then also philosophy to to have the possibility to win because if the french national team will only spike strong and don't uh, think about this we will lose most of the game and is that something like um through the coaches that you guys have had have they been like very specific about these situations we don't spike on like is that, is that pretty clear or does he allow kind of freedom with the attackers to kind of make the decision and, and be open to that? Or is there like certain situations where it's like, no, every single time here, we, we look to, to recycle, if that makes sense. We, we are the team, like in our team, who need a lot of freedom because, uh, because we are like this, we are a strange team. We have, uh, so 
but then we we just also have the player who have uh, really a lot of shots to like uh, to how to say uh, to choose from yeah to choose from yeah exactly and uh, we know for example we know that we have good block defense so just to play smart if the ball is not good just play on the setter like this we learn our organize our our blocks defense mm -hmm. to contra attack uh, we know that we are liberal who is covering a lot so just play on the block to have the possibility to to have free ball and play uh, for simple pipe so yeah we we know that we have the player to do this and for sure tilly was also like the coach he was uh, he was pushing a lot about uh, about this because uh, he knows that uh, we don't have the team to play only on high ball like uh, like russian like uh, polish sometimes to to just hit strong in the top of the finger now we have a little bit more play about this because uh, patri is doing really good uh Klevno is doing uh is fighting strong on the high uh, high ball so we we have more player but still with this uh technique to to play also with the block to recycle the block this is always and it will be it's i think should be should be uh should be always important for our national team no absolutely absolutely and that yeah with i as as a leader on the team i apologize there's one question that popped up as a leader on the team, when you're dealing with players like you know Inga Pet and you know other guys on the French national team who have big personalities, uh, and you know, a little bit ego, enjoy yeah, of course, e like there's a lot of players with the ego, but a little bit ego, they enjoy themselves like off the court. I think, it, and especially them being such an important piece of the team too, from a performance standpoint, there's always like that balance, like back and forth of like. As a leader, how have you guys been able to allow players to have that freedom, but also have the structure within the team as well, and like balance, like like a play, like I said, like Irvin, um, because I think that's so. Because it's like it's. I feel like with players like that, you see this like in American sports all the time. It's such a balance between the team like crashing and burning, or like being one of the top teams when you have like one of your top players. That's like why. That. Uh, that's why sometimes we are performing like crazy in one competition, and the competition <laughs> after we we struggle. Maybe also that's why. Uh, so, like you say, I think it's important to find a balance between uh, these two aspects. But uh, but for sure, this is also the characteristic of our team, and uh, I think it's difficult to change. And also. What was important is that uh, when Tilly arrived uh, as the coach of national team, he doesn't try to to change this and uh, give us a lot of freedom. Also now with uh, with Andrea Gianni, it's uh, it's the same. But uh, for sure, it's uh, always important to find the balance because uh, because we have a good team, we are uh, strong players, like uh, but big character, and uh, and it's always difficult to. And for the moment, we have like quite a lot of problem to to play on the highest level to competition in the role we do last year in the vnl we take bronze medal and then olympic game like uh, gold medal but we struggle a lot during the first part of the olympic and this summer for last summer i mean we also won the vnl and uh and we struggle in the like we lose in quarter final of the uh, world championship so so for sure, it's uh, it's tough, it's tough, but uh, we have to work on this and uh, and find the balance between the between the players, between the between the teammates to to have this um, crazy guy and the guy who is who are taking like care about more about the team and uh, and okay, let's do like this. Uh, but yeah, it's it's really particular national team <laughs> for sure. No, for sure, no, absolutely. Well, one last one last game here before we let you go. Um, you played against pretty much every top player in the world by now, and uh, in every top country. So I want to play a little game with you, and I'm gonna name off countries one by one by one, and okay. I'm gonna give you five words, right? And I want within those five words, you can use less than five words. It's up to you. What's the first thing that comes into your mind? Uh, whether it's their style of play or just something, a characteristic that sticks out to you about that country's version of volleyball. Okay. 
Um, but before we do that, I want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor of the podcast, Dr. Price Electrolytes. Use the code Addison for 20% off. All right. With that being said here, that, again, try it as fast as you can. The first couple words that come up, you have five words maximum. Oh. All right. Okay. Here we are. <laughs> first country, Brazil. Uh, Curitiba, uh, Maracazinho, uh, World League, um, Fans, and Avayanas. USA. Dallas. Uh, <laughs> perfect, perfect. <laughs> Dallas, Chicago. Uh, uh, Ethel. Uh, Hollister. And David Smith, my friend. <laughs> perfect. Uh, last two here, or the last three. Perfect. Japan. Perfect. <laughs> uh, culture. Mm -hmm. uh, respect, uh, clean country, mm. uh, crazy fans, uh, last two here. and last Okinawa, Japan. Ooh. Italy, Pasta, uh, Ravenna, uh, What I can say, yeah. Uh, I have two or three now, Italy. You can use less than five. You can only say two if you okay. want to. Uh, no, that's all. That's all, yeah. Okay, all right. Two more, actually. Russia. Cool. Uh, Kazan. Uh, you can use less than five. You can only say two if you want to. Mm, <laughs> dog. And that's all. Yeah. And last one is France. Uh, baguette. Oh yeah. Uh, set. Um, start of career. And uh, family. Perfect. Hey Ben, just just again, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. We wish you the best of luck uh, in you. this in this career and the following careers to come. Uh, just remember, <laughs> if you can't handle the heat, goddamn kitchen. This has been another episode presented by Out of System.